Well, hi there, everyone. It's been so long since we've had our little chats, and I just wanted to say hello, and um, I'm back. I don't know how often I'll be back, but um, anyway. I was thinking today about music. Duh. I think about that a lot. It's kind of sort of what I do, and um, I really think that we underestimate um, the power of music. I mean... God created it. It's a, it's a God thing. Man, we didn't make this up. We're not that smart. Um, it's such a beautiful thing that uh, literally can soothe the troubled soul. It can woo someone um, to the feet of Christ. It can um, encourage someone who's down. It can also incite anger to people. It can manipulate you into feeling lonely and depressed. It's very powerful, uh, music is. And the you know, when people tap into that for whatever purposes they have control over you. And so music is just, that's why, you know, Satan, Lucifer, um, the devil, whatever you want to call him, Lucifer, uh, he was a music person. And, um, you know, it's no big um, wonder that he would have insight to the power uh, and influence that music can have on people. So... Obviously, he uses it um, to inspire um, carnality and worldliness and lust of the flesh and all that, all those things. I mean, marketers know that music works. They play certain kind of music, music, at um, you know, to sell certain things or at certain times of the day or night in the store in which you shop. They're all trying to pull at your emotions and hype you up or push you down or get you out of there or get you to want to buy or get you to be sentimental or um, nostalgic and they can get you to, you know, play into their hand. All that being said, music in the church um, can be a, an amazingly powerful tool when used properly. Um, you know, people have, we have to connect with people's emotions um, and get their attention so that they will be able to connect with our God. And so music that gets people's attention and that um, it brings alive their emotions so that they can become vulnerable in the presence of the Lord is not a bad thing. I'm not against that. Um, I think that, you know, just the story alone of how David would play and it would soothe um, the spirits within Saul um, is just a testimony to how powerful music can be. And so I was really thinking about the purposes of music and when I'm choosing songs, I try to to really weigh it out, look at the lyrics, what is the purpose of this song? I do not want to just play music because someone else is playing it and because it's the cool tune to play at the time. Um, there's a very cultish kind of uh, cliquish um, area of music you can get into and I'm afraid I've never been in the middle of that and I hope I, I never am. I, I want to be about music that gets me to Jesus and that draws me closer to Him or gets me excited about Him or you know, that doesn't promote, um, I, I don't know. Anyway, so I started thinking about the different categories with, within um, which music should fit. And I decided that music could be either vertical, in case you're challenged and don't know vertical means up and down, and then there's horizontal music. Okay, um, vertical music is music that is from me um, straight up to him. And... Uh, it's personal. It can be, um, that's, that's where your worship music comes in. Word, uh, songs are in first person. Um, Jesus, I love you because you care. That kind of thing. Love you, I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. All those are vertical songs that you're singing to the Lord. And those are always in order. Um, the, those vertical songs can also be songs of consecration. You know, search me, oh God, know my thoughts today. Um, or... Um, you know, use me, Lord, those kind of songs that are vertical, okay, with me, okay. And then, um, those are for um, exaltation and for um, consecration, those types of things. Now, the horizontal music um, can be, is when you're singing to other people about the Lord, okay? For example, um, and those purposes are for like proclamation and celebration and I had one more, I thought I wrote it down, but 
testimonies, things like that, you know, um, he's an on-time God, yes he is, you're telling someone else about an attribute of God, look what the Lord has done, um, when I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, I could shout, those are rallying, celebra celebratory type songs, and they're perfectly in order, um, but you have to know, um, and when you sing about, you know, you proclaim the things of God that, um, what a friend we have in Jesus. God is my healer. There's power in the spirit, all those things. And you're singing about the things of God. You're still lifting him up. You're just doing it in, in, as a group. And so um, if your songs don't fall into that category, um, then they're really kind of a waste of time. So um, I just really feel a calling back to um, just Holy Ghost music, church music that um, that lifts him up, that really brings us into his presence and helps us to to focus not on, oh, that was a cool intro, or that was a cool outro. You know, if songs have perfect beginnings and perfect endings, and there's no Jesus in between, I, to someone please tell me what the point is of that. I mean, or, you know, you're, you have a band that um, plays amazingly and tight and hits every little chord, every little lick, and it's perfect, but they go down and get a cup of coffee, sit on the back row during the preaching, never come to the altar, you know, I don't have any use for that. It's worship. It has to be pure. When you sing the lyrics, if they're old songs, if they're new songs, they have to be infused with sincerity and purity and passion. Um, it has to, you have to consider your audience at all times. Um, you have to glorify the Lord. And the Bible does say, play skillfully with a loud noise. And I'm pretty sure we got the loud part covered. But um, we should give him our very best and learn the music inside and out. I mean, that's important. I, I'm not um, discounting that. But never, ever at the expense of entering into his presence. That is the only purpose we have for music in the church. And um, to use it for any other purpose to just sound good, sound cool, to get your groove on, you know, that's not, it's not what it was created for. Give me music that gets me excited about Jesus and, and or gets me into his presence so he can really do a work on me. So as you're singing, as a worshiper, even as a congregational singer, take a minute and stop listening to all the chords and the runs and connect with the lyrics and connect with your God because that is the purpose of music, and that is the only thing worth um, singing for, is for His glory.